mean that you uh, have to just end up in a cube someplace uh, writing code. There's lots of different jobs. At Right now, technologies in Bozeman, people with computer science backgrounds, sure, they could have been so done software development. People think that person's off in a cube in a basement someplace, never sees the light of day. And that's not true. Software developers today work in teams. They interact a lot. There's a lot of interaction there. Um, web developers, an awful lot of companies in Montana need web developers to help them build their websites. And you know, as was mentioned in one of the videos, somebody who can code is kind of like viewed like somebody who has magic powers, and and that's kind of cool. Uh, there are jobs in software testing. These are in software businesses, technical support. Uh, in our business, we had a whole bunch of people that needed technical backgrounds, and they flew all over the world doing installations for our clients and helping train people. So sometimes you get a computer science you end up working outside with people, and you get to travel all over the place, uh, pre-sales technical, and many many times you know you hire all these technical people, and you need managers. So leadership skills combined with computer science skills opens up a whole other set of opportunities. Every company these days has computers, so technical people are needed in IT departments, uh, information technology, it doesn't matter if it's a hospital or school or uh, any kind of business needs these. And you might even decide, like me, that you used your computer science skills you want to go start a company. So I'm going to, I've actually written a book, and I'm going to send the school up there uh, uh, a bunch of copies of my book on how to start a company. So you don't have to wait till you graduate from college. Maybe you can do it as a as a high school student. Go out and do this. The other thing, I think that this hour of code is just awesome. I want to mention one other resource that's available to you. This is a program that uh, I myself started with another gentleman here in Bozeman back in September, and it's called Code Montana, and the website is Code. Montana.org, and if you get excited about this hour of code and you're, you wet your whistle a little bit and want to go further, CodeMontana.org is a website. You can go there. It's free of charge. It's for anybody in high school in the state of Montana. As I said, it's free of charge. It's about $10,000 worth of prizes. You can sign up on there and learn. take that next step, learn more about coding. If you do it on your own, maybe you want to get a group together at school. We've already got 600 kids all over the state of Montana doing this Code Montana program. And again, it's uh, kind of another way to go to that next level. Also on that CodeMontana.org website are a bunch of other resources on the web where you can learn more about coding. I want to talk about just a couple of myths, and then I want to open it up for questions for anybody that has any questions for me about how I started the business, or what coding's really like, or what the jobs are. The first is, a lot of people think coding is not for girls, it's only for boys. Well, that's just not true. Uh, I think uh, women and girls are some of the best software developers. In fact, in the Code Montana program, one third of those 600 kids, 200 of those kids that we have doing this program, are girls in high school all over the state. Um, if you decide as a, as a young lady to go into computer science, um, you're going to have incredible doors open up for you. And I would encourage you, if you're inclined that way at all, to go for it. The second thing, another myth, people think that technical companies, software companies like right now technology, this company I started, only hire technical people. And that's just not true. Only about 10% of our payroll was related to people that actually did software development. We still had marketing people, we had accounting people. So by filling these high tech jobs across the state, we're actually creating opportunities for all kinds of people. And this can happen right in Eureka because the internet, you don't have to go to San Francisco or Seattle to get a great job. The internet removes geography as a constraint, so you can do it right from Eureka. And the last myth that I hear from people is to say, well, the only people that go into uh, software development or computer programming are, are, are people that like to play computer games. And there certainly are people that like to play computer games and software development, but uh, the reality is um, uh, there's lots of great career opportunities 
most of which have nothing to do with computer gaming. If that's what gets you started and gets you excited, great. But I would just encourage you to look more broadly and realize that there's a great career path in front of you, and there's great jobs right here in Montana for people to get computer science degrees. So just by way of inspiring you, I'd say I encourage you to do this hour of code. Think about codemontana.org as a way to go to the next level. Maybe when I get these books up to you, think about taking one out of the library and reading about how to start your own business. I started my own software company in high school, and it <laughs> These things happen. <laughs> I'd like to know who's streaming. <laughs> Sorry about that. Good job. We need some of you guys to get out there and fix these internet problems. Our whole world would fall apart if we didn't have our technology, wouldn't it? Somebody's got to build it, and you're just the people to do it. So any form of engineering or computer science is going to teach you how to solve problems, and that will do more to set you up for a great career and satisfaction in your work. I have so enjoyed starting and growing software businesses and uh, I'd love to do it here in Montana and great, create good paying jobs here. So with that, I can't encourage you more. What questions do you have for me about anything? Do any of you have a question? Just raise your hand and I'll bring the mic over and you're welcome to ask great questions about entering computer science or his background. <laughs> Right Who's got the first question? I'm getting to it, Jerry. Listen. How does technology work with just one system? I'm sorry, how does technology work with just one system? That was the question. Yeah, so, um, you know, the, the exciting thing about computers is, you know, you need a whole bunch of different systems. Um, you know, you're going to learn in this hour of code one particular language. It's no different than learning uh, Spanish or French. Um, uh, you know, if you say something in French, though, and it's not quite right, um, the other person can probably still understand you. Uh, computers aren't that smart. So as you start doing coding, you're going to find that all your punctuation needs to be in the right place. All the words have to be perfect. And it doesn't all work with one computer, one type of computer. Um, different computers understand different languages. So just because you learn how to program a, a PC, uh, you might have to learn a different language um, to program your mobile phone. Um, and But the, just like if you tried to go learn Spanish after learning French, the second language is that much easier to learn. I, I know about five or six different software development languages. Um, when we started Right Now Technologies, I actually wrote the first program that we sold to customers, and then we had a whole engineering team. We ended up with 200 people doing software development to build our products for us, and they worked in a whole bunch of different languages and with many different systems. So uh, that's kind of what makes it fun. It isn't... Okay, next question. Yeah. Um, I'm Tyler, and how long did it take you to get this far? How long did it? How long did it take me to what? To get as far as you have. Oh well, I'm 52 years old. That sounds like an old geezer. <laughs> um, but Tyler, I, I, and I'll tell you, in in junior high, I uh, used to cut lawns. That's how I made my money. I, I go out and. I had a lawnmower and I ran a, run around in the summer and cut lawns and then I got interested in computers and I bought for it was less than a thousand dollars I bought a computer and it it can't do half of what your mobile phone does today and I found somebody who <coughs> excuse me had one of these computers and they wanted some help so they needed a program that just it sounds simple but they just needed a program that would store names and addresses and all of our computers can do that today but back then 
when you got computer out of the box, it couldn't do anything really unless you told it how to do it. And I wrote some programs and and uh, I sold those programs, got paid to build them, and, and then that meant I didn't have to sweat as much pushing the lawnmower around. So um, I was able to do that. And then when I went to college, I studied uh, electrical engineering as an undergraduate. That was for my bachelor's degree. And then I got a master's degree in computer science. And uh, even in school, I, I, I wrote programs in uh, assembly language and COBOL. And then out of school, I went to Bell Laboratories, which was a, a research institution that actually invented the transistor and fiber optics and a whole bunch of things we take for granted today. Uh, but I got the itch, and I, I almost lasted three years in a real job. I, in fact, when I came home from work after my first day, I was still living with my parents. And my mother met me at the front door, and she said, so how was work today? And I said, it was all right. And then she looked me in the eye and she goes, do you think you can do that for the next 40 years? And uh, the answer was no, because I really wanted to start a business. So when I was three years out of school, um, I quit my job and uh, started a software company. And that company grew to about 75 employees. And that took, I graduated from college in 83 and uh, started that business in 86. Um, and we we sold that business to McAfee, the antivirus company, in 1994. Um, and then that's when my wife and I decided to move to Montana because we felt that, really, with the internet, you can be anywhere and be a software developer. You can live on the the most uh, uh, beautiful mountain by the most beautiful river, um, raise your kids right near home, and make a good wage. So we came here, and then I've been the Right Now Technologies business that we started in Bozeman. That took 15 years. I started that in '97, and uh, we sold it to Oracle for. Uh, Mr. Rob was right. It was a lot of money. It was almost two billion dollars. That was about two years ago. We sold that business, and I'm happy to say Oracle is now the largest commercial employer in Bozeman. So all those jobs stayed here. Hopefully, that answered the question. Here's another question for you. Yeah. My name is Lee, and my grand my grandfather oh, my grandfather he's always in he's always in his office um, do, uh, copying and pasting everything in code um, uh, copying and pasting and everything code and um, he makes websites for companies that and if so like wait is it Cool. Did you hear all of that? Yeah, so, yeah, so he, your granddad, granddad, granddad is uh, building, building websites, websites right? right? Yeah, something like that. And he wanted to know is that considered computer science then? Yes, absolutely. You know what you ought to do? You ought to go to your grandpa and say, hey, uh, would you hire me? And uh, maybe he could take you on as an intern. You can learn how to build websites and make some money. And I'm sure he would love to teach you. And uh, you can make some money while you're at it because he's got he has paying customers, doesn't he? Any other questions out there? Hello. My Who's name next? is what? <laughs> My name is Ronald, and I'm in the eleventh grade. And uh, my question is actually, what is coding? I have no idea what we're talking about. <laughs> I don't think he was one of the kids that raised his hands earlier. I, okay. I think Ronald probably speaks for a lot of the kids sitting here right now. They don't yeah. have a clue what coding is. Yeah, don't, don't let don't it scare you. you. You can do this. It's no more difficult than doing a crossword puzzle. And when you start. When you start telling the computer what to do and it's doing things that you're instructing it, you'll start to feel like the master of the universe. And uh, that's a really good feeling. I'm Tom Kirby, and I'm just wondering how long does it take to write code? Uh, yeah, so, so, you know, a simple, simple program, program, I think. I think on this um, Code Montana program, we had 600 kids sign up 
starting in the middle of September, and immediately they started writing code. Uh, I think at in the first six weeks, these 600 kids had written 14,000 programs. So it doesn't take very long to write a simple program, but then it's sort of uh, it's a little seductive. You'll you'll write a little program. It'll do something interesting. But then you'll get the bug and you want it to do something else, so you'll have to go research it, do a little more work on it, and it kind of takes on a life of its own. And uh, it doesn't take, I mean, in an hour, you can be writing, a, you can be writing a, a program that actually does something. Maybe it just draws a circle on the screen or says, hello world. Um, but uh, pretty quickly, you can write a program that will do something. Now, if you want to uh, write a program that you know, runs all of the accounting for a big corporation, well, one person's probably not enough people to write that program. Uh, but you can start small, and that's a, that's a concept in computer science, which is divide and conquer, um, where you, you take a big project, and you break it into little pieces, and then you work on the little pieces individually. So you should pick some things that are kind of fun. The curriculum for Hour of Code will do exactly that. You'll pick something small, get introduced, um, but in you know in a couple of hours you'll have programs working that you wrote all by yourself, and uh, and then you that's like having the special pixie dust. All right, I think we have a couple more questions out here. Great. Hi, I'm Caitlin. How how hard can programming be? Oh well, you can make it as hard as you want. I mean, I uh, my oldest son went to uh, Caltech and he studied computer science at Caltech which is down in Pasadena um, and uh, that's one of the best engineering schools in the country and they were writing programs that were doing math problems that were so complex that they couldn't do them with a pencil and paper because they had to take multi-dimensional matrices and multiply them together and get answers but Programming doesn't have to be that complicated. I mean, a, a Hello World program will just put something on the screen. But uh, the beauty of computers is um, they'll do whatever you tell them to do. Uh, the downside of computers is they'll do exactly what you tell them to do. So you have to be very precise. Um, so computer programming does require some uh, orientation to detail. But I am fully convinced that anybody can do it and enjoy it um, because it's uh, it's fun. What kind of products do you make, and like what can you make? I'm Damon. I'm in the eighth grade. Uh, what products do you make, and what can you make? Okay, so the question is about our software products, and right now technologies. Um, we built software that helped large consumer businesses take care of their customers better. So I'm sure you've heard about some of these websites like Orbitz, Travelocity, Expedia. If you go to any of those websites, on the home page is a button that says click here for support, like customer support. And you're able to go in there and search a knowledge base and look for answers. And if you can't find your answer to your question, the software will route your question to somebody at that company who will then answer your question. So the software we built um, basically did everything under that customer service button back to the software that was sitting on the agent's desktop in the call center. And we did that work for about 2,000 companies all over the world, people like Cabela's, Remington Firearms, Medicare, uh, Nike, Orbitz, Travelocity, Expedia, many government agencies. And if you take all of those websites together at Right Now Technologies, our data centers, um, we had about 5,000 computers in our data centers. So it was a pretty big operation. And we were one of the top 100 websites in the world. We had 8 billion visitors a day coming in and getting answers to the questions. And the way we helped our customers save money was if somebody comes to a website and gets an immediate answer to their question, well, then they don't have to pick up the phone and call or send an email. And the economics of that are such that a self-service session where a customer helps themselves may only cost 25 cents, whereas an email if a human has to answer an email, it probably costs three or four dollars. 
and a phone call um, would cost like ten or twelve dollars uh, because of the labor involved. So what we did was we helped companies shift interactions from email and phone over to self-service interactions, and that saved our customers just bucketfuls of money. And uh, as a result, we were able to sell our software for a fair fair price. That's what right now technologies do. Okay, I'm a freshman, and you said you had like a thousand employees. So are you guys in like this giant shed or something? Where where are you guys? Where do you work? Yeah, that's a good question. So, um, the if you uh, if I, I mean, I'm sure you all use Google Maps. Uh, the address is 136 Discovery Drive. Enterprise 136 Enterprise Boulevard, Bozeman. And if you do a Google Maps um, and put it on satellite, you'll see our campus. Our average building, um, we had some buildings that were 10,000 square feet. They were two-story buildings. We had some other buildings that were like 30,000 square feet up to three stories. And we had a whole bunch of them. And we built them around some uh, trout ponds. And we had a little campus there on like 17 acres and those were the right now building and I would say also about half of our employees were in Bozeman between five and six hundred um, the other uh, five to six hundred were in 17 offices all over the world so we had an office in Tokyo uh, Japan in Sydney Australia Dallas San Francisco New York Atlanta London Munich Germany we had to be where our customers were and uh, I had to the, Tough duty I had. I had to go travel all those places to meet our customers. That's a rough deal. Well, Greg, we got to call it a, a day for right now. We greatly appreciate your time and hanging out with us. And we only had one little glitch. Thank you all. And I'll and Mr. Rob, I'll send you these books so you have them. And go see Mr. Rob if you want them. And wish us luck in our hour of coding. Yeah, code it up. Bye bye.